When you examine the state of our educational system today, there is little doubt that something is in need of change. As author John Irwin points out in his latest book, Inspiring the Best in Students, the high school graduation in America's 10 largest cities hovers at an alarming 50%. In addition, research shows that 30% of high school students participate in high-risk behaviors that not only interfere with their education, but also jeopardize their physical and emotional safety. Unfortunately, this dangerous behavior is not limited to secondary schools. According to USA Today, elementary principals are facing a rise in violence and aggression among their young students, including kindergarten and first grade. These statistics suggest that schools need to do more than address the academic needs of today's children. Schools must now also address the social and emotional skills that students need to get along with peers and with adults. Many educational experts, including Mr. Irwin, believe that the answer to irresponsible student behavior is in social emotional learning, abbreviated to SEL. SEL is a process through which children acquire the knowledge and skills to recognize and manage their emotions, set and achieve positive goals, demonstrate caring and concern for others, and learn to take responsibility for their own behavior. The question is, how do today's educators address social-emotional learning when their instructional plates are already full to overflowing? For an answer to this question, we turned to Mr. Irwin. He has several years of classroom experience teaching in grades 7 through 12 and now works as an independent consultant for schools and districts nationwide. John's books and workshops are designed to show teachers how to integrate SEL into their current curriculum. We traveled to Louisville, Kentucky to watch as John presents his ideas about social emotional learning to a group of teachers and administrators from the Jefferson County Schools. In the first six of these videos, you will be a virtual participant in that workshop for Louisville teachers. Through John's presentations, you will learn about social-emotional learning, why it is needed in today's schools, and how to integrate an effective SEL program into your curriculum. Then you will see firsthand how to implement many of the ideas John presents in the workshop. First, John talks with a group of high school students about emotions and how they affect behavior. Then you will see classroom examples of an activity called emotional graffiti at both the elementary and secondary levels. In this activity, Students define emotions and relate how they have experienced different emotions in their lives. The next classroom video focuses on managing emotions with a technique John calls a behavioral tune-up. You will see the tune-up activity explained and demonstrated to both secondary and elementary students. We then return to John and the secondary students for a class meeting about perceptions in general and stereotyping in particular. In the final two videos, you will see SEL concepts applied to solving behavior problems. With SEL, the main objective is to teach students to control their emotions and take responsibility for their own behavior. And now, to begin our examination of social-emotional learning, let's join John Irwin and the Louisville teachers. Thank you. Thank you, Glenna. Thank you, leadership team, for bringing me in, uh, Care for Kids leadership team. And it's good to see you all again uh, and back, be back in Louisville on a rather breezy day. <laughs> be, do I get to experience Louisville weather? Yeah, good. Uh, looking forward to working with you today. It'll be an interactive day. Uh, we're, we're not going to be able to play some of the crazy games that we did last time, the Do You Know Your Neighbors and the Inner Outer Circle and that kind of thing. But we will be doing, we'll, I'll be keeping you active. So let's just uh, go over an overview of the day. Uh, this is my little logo here, which uh, means a lot, I think. This is something my wife developed for Inspiration for Education, which is the name of my business. Uh, the tree, which is, a represents a, which is a traditional representation of knowledge and wisdom and strength. 
And that's us, and that's the kind of kids we want uh, to, to educate, kids who are strong, who are wise, and who are, uh, well, they're going to be strong and wise <laughs> and intelligent. And uh, the little acorn there represents our kids. And the last workshop was based on what we need to do with, with a seed if we want it to grow, which is to provide a need-satisfying environment. And that was the, the focus of the classroom of choice, making sure the kids are in a, have, a, has a, have a good relationship with the teacher, uh, that they are, are able to meet their, their needs uh, in the classroom for survival, love and belonging, power, freedom and fun. And then if you do that, uh, you cultivate the desire to grow. Uh, so we get those little acorns to turn into wise, strong oak trees. Um, but just like the acorn, uh, kids have genetic instructions. The acorn has genetic instructions to be an oak tree. Uh, kids have genetic instructions to be human, which is, means to follow those ge genetic instructions to meet those needs for, again, survival, love and belonging, power, freedom, and fun. Uh, but become, to become a wise, responsible, respectful, self-regulating oak tree, <laughs> kids need some skills. And that's where social-emotional skills come in. So this workshop is really a, a natural follow-up to the, uh, the first workshop. And, and I'll make reference to some of the concepts that we talked about in there. But once the kids are, have a good relationship with, their, with each other and with the teacher, and once they feel intrinsically motivated to be in the classroom, now we've got them, and now we can teach them some social-emotional skills that they're going to need to be successful in academics, but also in life. Um, it's still choice theory based, so now instead of asking you to use choice theory in the classroom, I'll ask you to con continue to do that, but also to, to teach choice theory in the classroom as well to, to the students and, and other related skills. So our agenda for today is social emotional learning, sometimes known as SEL. And this is a little slow. What we're going to look at is what is social emo emotional learning? What does that mean? Uh, what is the need for social emotional learning? And I, I'm sure all of you can think of some children right now. <laughs> and their little faces are probably popping up in your head of some kids who need some social skills or some self-regulating skills who might, might need some impulse control uh, or using the filter between the brain and the mouth that some of us don't use. <laughs> uh, what the research tells us about social emotional learning and uh, Glenna tells me that CASEL, some, some representatives from CASEL, which is the collaborative for academic social emotional learning, are here. And I, I, I hope I meet them because I want to thank them for the research that they've done that shows the direct correlation between social emotional learning and academic achievement. There is. Uh, so we're going to look at the research and then the characteristics of an effective social emotional program. And finally, how we can integrate social emotional learning into the classroom in a way that isn't another add-on, another thing for teachers to do. It's just another way to get to the curriculum. So after each uh, little component of the, today's program, I'm going to have you talk about, uh, or sometimes I'll just s simply present some ways you can integrate it into English language arts, history, music, science, technology, and so forth. But I'll also ask you to think about some ways you can see of integrating this content into what you're already doing so it isn't another thing you have to do. So that's what we're doing today. Um, now, why did I get involved? How and why did I get involved in social emotional learning? As I was, uh, when I was in the classroom, um, my school district paid for me to go to the William Glasser Institute and get trained in choice theory and get certified. And part of this, it's a two year process. And part of the process is developing a certification week presentation that has to demonstrate your understanding of choice theory and has to be something that you can practically apply in your work setting. Well, I was an English teacher, so I was looking at taking concepts of choice theory and having kids look at literature through a choice theory lens. So in other words, they might read a story and they look at what, what are the driving needs that are the motivation behind these characters, um, you know, their actions and their thoughts and their, and their values. And uh, so the kids would, in, in small groups would focus on a character and as they're char charting the character's actions and thoughts throughout the book, they're looking at, oh, what need does that meet? What need does that meet? And kids were able to really understand character's motivation a lot better and character development and character change and that kind of thing. So I had to teach, in order for them to do that, I had to teach them some choice theory. So I took a couple of days and I gave them a pretty brief overview of, of choice theory and that all our behavior are, is, is a choice 
and that we're responsible for all our choices and that we're driven by these five basic needs and we see the world differently in some of the activities that we're going to be doing today. And then they would uh, apply it to literature. Well, a couple years after I did this the first time, I got a phone call one day from this kid named Mike. Mike uh, was a great kid. He's one of those, uh, he was a high school senior when I had him. And um, he was one of those kids that you were just glad that he never missed a day. He was just a, a great, had a great personality, you know, funny kid, really bright, added a lot to class discussion and that kind of thing. Uh, however, uh, Mike had some problems. His uh, parents had gone through a divorce and his, uh, his dad and mom were not getting along real well and they were kind of distracted from, from him. And he was getting into some, some trouble and uh, I think he was getting into, well, clearly marijuana. It was pretty obvious because he would come in reeking sometimes uh, into the classroom. Oh, what's that smell? This, are we at a concert? Oh, Mike's here. Um, so you could, you know, you could tell he was getting into marijuana, and I heard stories that it, there was some drinking going on, and he was involved in, with this very destructive relationship with a, an, a troubled girl. And when he graduated, he had no plans, uh, you know. And I thought, geez, you know, he's it's such a waste. He's such a great kid, and he's really going to be going through some troubles for the next few years. Well. I was mowing my lawn one day and I got a phone call and my, uh, my son called me in and said, somebody on the phone wants to talk to a Mr. Irwin. So I picked it up and he said, this is Mike. I said, Mike? And he gave me his last name. I said, oh, how are you doing? He said, well, I just wanted to call you up and thank you for teaching me that choice stuff. I'm like, well, great. You know? And then he told me what was going on. He'd broken up with that troubled girl, uh, which is probably a good thing. He'd moved to Florida to live with his mom. He's enrolled with a, well, he'd gone through a rehab. He put himself through rehab, and he was uh, assigned to, or he'd, he was uh, registered for a, a community college. So he was going to school, and he was on the right track, and he said, I just want to thank you for teaching me that choice stuff. That's really made a difference. And <laughs> being a typical teacher, I guess I had to correct him. Um, I said, well, it wasn't the choice stuff that did it. It was you. you know? And he said, you know, you know, you're right. And uh, I didn't get a lot of phone calls asking, you know, thanking me for, teaching them King Lear or One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. But, uh, you know, kids would come back and say, thanks for, for teaching me to write. But I got more uh, feedback from teaching kids things like choice theory and social emotional skills. And, and in his case, he took those ideas and, and made a difference in his life. So that's how I got involved in it. And I didn't even know it had a name. Uh, I was just teaching kids choice theory. And now I know that it's got a name. It's character education. And it, the way through to character education for me is through social emotional learning, Keep teaching kids the skills that they need to be successful academically and in school. OK. The next thing we're going to do is talk about what it is. What is social emotional learning? There's different uh, definitions. Um, this is from, the, from Castle, the people that are here today. Uh, it's the process through which kids acquire knowledge and attitudes and skills to recognize and manage their own emotions, to make responsible decisions, uh, to set and achieve positive goals, to demonstrate empathy, caring, and concern for other people, to build and maintain those very important relationships, because remember the three rules of, of education and life? Relationships, relationships, relationships. And to handle interpersonal situations effectively. Emotional skills, uh, based on Daniel Goleman's work, emotional intelligence, are intrapersonal skills. It's having the knowledge, the desire, and the ability, which I call the head, the heart, and the hand, uh, to understand themselves, to be aware of their, themselves, their motivation, their actions, their thoughts, their perceptions, uh, being able to reflect upon those things, to regulate themselves, controlling emotions, tr controlling their thoughts, and, and transforming their feelings, as well as their physiology, uh, to self-control, to manage their stress, and we're going to do some stress reduction activities in here today, so we all have stress, so that'll be good for you, too. Uh, to self-motivate, to uh, you know, set goals and achieve those goals in the most efficient way possible, and to take personal responsibility. Social learning uh, is integrated with emotional learning. They go together. It's almost impossible to take them apart and talk about them separately, but you can just for intellectual purposes. But, um, it's acquiring the knowledge, the desire, and the ability to use intra, in, I'm sorry, interpersonal skills, being aware of other people's motivation, other people's feelings, their thoughts, their, the way they see the world differently than, ours, than the way we see the world. It's developing a sense of caring and concern and empathy. Uh, it's building and maintaining those important relationships, using pro-social behaviors 
and learning social responsibility, that we are not only responsible for ourselves, but for the, the greater good. Okay, that's what it is. Next, we're gonna do an activity that will ask you to think about your, the successes you've achieved in your life. Because a lot of the successes you've achieved in your life are because you have social and emotional skills. Now, where we get them, we got them from our parents, some of us got them from church, some of us got them through the school of hard knocks, some of them just seem to come naturally to some of us. Um, but I'd like you to, to kind of analyze these successes that you've had. You've had academic successes in your life. You have all graduated from high school. You know, that's a success. We've gone to college. Uh, some of you got some academic, uh, you know, awards and that kind of thing. Um, maybe you got a 4-0, you know, in, in graduate school or, or something like that. You've had professional successes. You have a job. That's a success these days, <laughs> having a job. And, and you've had some successes with kids over the years, individual kids, or maybe you've gotten some academic or uh, professional awards or teacher of the, of the week or something like that. Uh, you've had personal successes. Um, we all have you know, things that we've achieved. Maybe you've uh, lost some weight or you've gained, uh, you've, you've won a, a, a 5K or at least finished one. You've uh, learned how to golf or learned how to knit or you know, crochet or something like that. You've learned uh, how to play cards and beat all your friends. You've had some personal successes. Uh, and you've also had some relational successes. You've got marriages that have lasted. You've got friendships that have lasted. You have good relationships with your kids. So I want you to think about all these different kinds of, of uh, successes that you've had while we do an activity, which is a, kind of a meet and greet. And it's also a way of teaching. Uh, we're going to practice some social skills. So if you remember last time, uh, this is called musical circles. If you remember last time, when the music is playing, your job is to get up and move around randomly all by yourself. Well, yeah, you can bring a friend if you want to, but move around randomly. When the music stops, I'll say freeze, and I'll hold up a number of fingers, and I'd like you to get with that number of people. So pairs, groups of three, groups of four. And I'm going to ask you to, to greet each other in a certain way and practice some social skills. And then I'm going to give you a talk, topic to talk about that relates to uh, success, the successes you've had. So we get a feel-good uh, experience first thing this morning. Are you ready? Ready. Okay. Probably the same tune that we did last time because it's, it's the theme for the day. So as soon as the music start, starts, use the whole space. Try not to knock over any cameras. And here we go. <clears throat> use the whole space. Okay, freeze. All right, the first thing I'm going to ask you to do with this person is to give them a good, firm handshake, look them in the eye, and say, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> All right, there's a social skill. The next thing I'd like you to do is, whoever wants to go first, introduce yourself. Hi, uh, you know, I'm blank, the blank, this is what I do, and then the other person will, will introduce themselves. I'm Marcia Ross, I teach fourth grade. Okay, your topic. Your topic is to talk about some of the personal and, let's see, yes, the academic and personal successes you've had. So just numbers one and three. Academic and personal successes that you've had in your life. Okay. Talk about that. It's okay to be and, uh, right. See, I'm married, three beautiful teenagers, mm -hmm. 18, 19, and 20. And uh, let's see, personal successes would be uh, I had my rank one. I've taught 28 years on the elementary level. And uh, I just feel really great at this point in my life. That's so, cool. That's how about yourself? I'm um, EBD teacher of Wellington Elementary School. Um, married, have two wonderful children. I've got a 16-year-old son who's discovering himself, uh -huh. and my 12-year-old daughter who supports him, which yeah. that creates a lot of balance yes. in the household. Yeah. Okay, please turn to your partner, shake their hand, look them in the eye, and say thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> All right, now this time I'm going to ask you to join your, yourself to your partner's hip and move together around the room, and when I stop, uh, you're going to get in a group of four. So 
When the music starts, just start moving around. <laughs> Stay with your partner. Okay, find another pair. This time we're going to practice another social skill. I'd like you to introduce your partner to the group. Uh, rather, so we, we've learned to introduce ourselves. This time we're going to introduce our partner. And so that puts you on the spot. Were you listening <laughs> when they introduce themselves? So introduce your partner. And this time, after you've introduced each other, talk about some professional successes you've had. Some professional successes you've had. On your mark, it's it. Discuss. Okay. Okay. This is Tiffany. Who wants to go first? I'll go first. Uh, this is Tiffany Morrison. She is a fourth grade writing teacher at Lula. And um, she's married and has two dogs. And um, she loves her dogs. Okay. <laughs> Um, this is Michelle. She's the principal at Rangeland. Um, she last this summer she was in a tennis tournament. So, um, and her and her partner won second place in the state. In the state. Yeah. This is Doris. She's from Johnsontown, and she has three children, two of which are post college, and one is in high school. Wish I was there. This is <laughs> Sheila, and she is from Gee. So she's part of our leadership team. Yeah, part of the leadership team. And I forgot your name. Nicole! Nicole. Nicole's in Gilmore Lane. She has three children, one of which is just a baby, Aww. baby. And all of them are young. Yes, young. Okay, now that you've done that. Okay, what I'd like you to talk about with this group is some of, the, some of your relational successes. You know, you've had marriages, you've had good friendships, uh, maybe you have good relationships with your kids. Uh, talk about, you know, I've had a friend that, that I've had since second grade, Kerry Johnson, lives in Michigan, or Minnesota, I don't know where he lives. He lives in Minnesota. Uh, but, you know, it's really great to have a friend for that long. The history is great. So talk about some relational successes, and then I'm going to have another question for this particular group of three. So, but first, just talk about some of those relational successes you've had. I guess um, I'll be married two years this summer, so I uh, recently married. And then I have two dogs, a Shih Tzu and a Golden Retriever that are like my kids. Uh, we're trying to start a family. It's, it's been kind of bumpy, but um, we're trying. So. Uh, well, I am married to a friend all the way back from college. Um, we knew each other 20 years ago, and we re-met at my school during a family night. And we've been married for six years. Um, so I, that's the forefront of when I think of relationships. But he has somewhat of a dysfunctional family, and most people say there's some dysfunction everywhere, but I'm proud to say my family has always been very close-knit. We just don't have arguments. Whether or not that's healthy or not, I don't know. But we've always lived in the same city within five miles of each other, and so that's something that I'm... I treasure, um, and like uh, John, have friends that go all the way back, because I was born and raised here, uh, friends that go all the way back to elementary school with me. And, uh, and then you have to think about the relationships you have with the kids. I've taken on a new job at my school, and I feel like I'm a movie star. I walk down the hall, and they all come to my class. I have 800 kids and I'm teaching a learning lab, and it's hands-on, robotic, Legos, engineering, and an outdoor uh, environmental education classroom. And so when... Anybody need more there, time? Like, Miss Kaylee, Miss Kaylee, you know, so it's... Okay, with the same group, what, with the same group, what I'd like you to think about are what personality or character traits that you have, or you learned over those years, have helped you achieve all the successes you've talked about, the personal, academic, professional, and, uh, and relational successes. For me, um, one of the things that, that helped me accomplish one of my uh, successes in life, which was getting the book published, was having a strong work ethic, getting up at 5 o'clock in the morning <laughs> and writing, no matter how I felt, and then optimism, believing that I could get it published, believing that I'm gonna, <laughs> this is going to be something worthwhile. So optimism and a strong work ethic helped me. Uh, same thing with my, my family, relationships. We uh, were all over the country, and we planned a, a, a family uh, reunion about five years ago. We started the annual five-year, you know, uh, the annual reunion five years ago, and we thought no one's going to come. But it, everybody showed up, every single Irwin and some other, <laughs> other related people showed up to the uh, family reunion. So that took some optimism, and now we're doing it every year, so it's awesome. awesome. So, with your group, just brainstorm some of the, strat some of the uh, character traits that you've had or personality traits that have helped you get those successes. Um, I guess 
I would say, like John, um, strong work ethic, I'm highly self-motivated, maybe not so much at home as I am in my career. Um, just always positive and I tend to have a lot of empathy and I'm able to put myself into my friends' shoes, my family, the students. Uh, I think that's one of my... As we leave the Louisville teachers, Think about the character traits that have contributed to your successes. Realizing what role these traits played in your life is a good first step to understanding the importance of social-emotional learning. In the next video, we'll continue with John's presentation as he explores how these character traits, or the lack thereof, can impact the students in our classrooms.